Hi friends, my name is Mina. Welcome to my channel, Mina Reads. And today we're going to be starting a weekly reading vlog. So I am already in the middle of reading The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi, which is one of my most anticipated releases of the year. And I'm only 75 pages into it, but I'm already very, very obsessed. Amina, the main character, she is a retired like pirate and she gets offered like this one last job. And if she does it, she has the ability to acquire like a million i don't know what the currency was called dram maybe a million dollars let's say and so she has the ability to acquire this large sum of money if she does this one last job which will be very perilous and she will have to leave her beloved daughter and family behind to do so but this is a life-changing amount of money so she decides to get the gang back together so that she can do this one last quest already amina's a badass in the first chapter or it's even more like a prologue she like fights off a demon single-handedly by saying ayato kursi and if you are muslim like you already know how iconic and legendary that is um right now the point that i'm at we are already in the kind of like getting the gang together sequence so she's going around picking up all of her former friends um she's picked up her one friend who's a poisoner and she's trying Trying to pick up her other friend who is the one who she left her ship to when she originally retired his name is um tinbu i want to say but tinbu is being arrested and like sentenced to death so she's trying to break him out of prison so already their low-key plan has gone awry and they are getting into all types of trouble on their very first stop in this epic quest i'm having a really good time so far i'm definitely going to keep you guys updated obviously that's what a vlog is all about but yeah i'm having a really good time but i'm going to finish making my lunch and then i will get on with the rest of my day who knows where the day's going to take me um but yeah i'm in a good mood today and i really really want to read this book so i'm excited i i'm happy that it's been a good start because i was a little bit worried that i wasn't going to love it just because i have a really bad track record for my most anticipated releases like failing me so i'm happy that i'm having a good time One thing that I'm really obsessed with about this book is the narration style and so the way that it's narrated is that Amina is telling her tale to a biographer named Jamal so sometimes there will be asides where she is talking directly to Jamal and uh, it's like really funny and I am listening to the audiobook as I read and so the way that the narrator does it is really funny and it it makes it feel like very immersive and she kind of just like moves away from the mic to like whisper things to Jamal and it's kind of funny that I love her I'm so obsessed with her I'm yeah I'm already I'm deep I'm 100 pages into it but like I am obsessed uh, SA Shocker Boy has got me she's won me over I'm obsessed. Let's hope that we keep these good vibes going. So a new day has dawned and I am still reading The Adventures of Amina al -Sarafi. I am on page 222 um, and I'm still loving it. It's still really, really good. We were kind of in like that collecting people for the journey phase um, and we're sort of now getting out of that because she has just encountered this demon from her past. Okay, but I love Amina. And I love all of her interesting contradictions as a person because like she's Muslim and in her in like the present day she has decided to like be on the upright righteous path again and like following all of the you know all of the rules that you're supposed to essentially but you know in her youth in her the peak of like her pirate queen days she was definitely not doing everything by the book so to speak um but she has like this one specific rule that i think is so funny so basically there is a scene, I don't want to like fully spoil it, but there's a scene where she's interacting with a man that she thinks is so beautiful and like she really wants to be with him and so their interaction is escalating to like almost a physical level and then she's like, I can't do this and he's like, you know, oh, well, why not? Like, is there another? You could bring them along because I'm not greedy and I was like, what? But then she says, um, you know, I can't do this because we're not married. Um, you know, it's forbidden. 
I only let my husband into my bed. Mind you, she's on like her fourth or fifth husband at this point. And her and her fourth slash fifth husband have just divorced. And so she's like, yeah, like I, I just can't do this with you. And he's like, you said your husband's gone, so I could just replace him. It is something so funny to me about that. She was just like, yeah, like I'm just gonna marry this guy cause I'm trying to smash. It's just so fucking funny, like bestie, please. Yeah, you don't even know him. Like, oh, this is so embarrassing. I was literally about to cry about this package because I thought that someone stole it because I have had a problem in the past. Let me move this back a little bit. I have had a problem in the past with people stealing my packages and because I'm a bookworm, most of my packages are books. I bought these books um, and I saw a bunch of other people getting their packages already. So I was like, damn, like where is, where are my books? So I look at like the tracking page and it was like, oh, your books were delivered two days ago. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? Like, where are they? So I'm about to, like, I was genuinely so upset. I was like, not this, not again. But my male person just hid them, like, next to my flower pots or whatever. But like, yeah, it's here. So we're gonna, we're gonna unbox it together. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so these are some monster romances, and my camera is of course about to die, so let's do this really quick. I think it's just the two books. Okay, so we have these two books by Aveda Vice. We have Inextricably Tied, which I read in the summer, and I did talk about this in a vlog, so I'll leave that vlog linked, but this is like a poly monster romance about this banshee, her gargoyle boyfriend, and their new boyfriend who's a night terror, and it's like horror mystery based they're like investigating this serial killer and they're trying to find um like his lair where he's harming all these girls but over the course of their like investigation they end up falling in love with each other and so it's a romance it's a bit dark but it's also really sexy and really fun and i really enjoyed this a whole lot and i can't wait to reread it because i had a good time reading it initially but i feel like if i reread it like it's going to become a new favorite so I enjoyed it so much, had to get a copy. And then Aveda, she just got um, these new covers for her book, Yours Insatiably, which is the follow-up to a novella that she has called Feed. And so this is about like a succubus and this mothman non-binary uh, love interest that they work together. It's like a workplace romance, but they have beef, hate to love. And in Feed, they like end up hooking up because the co-worker, he has like a side job as a, um, a sex worker so they end up hooking up through this like monster hookup app and uh yeah so it's like they hate each other but they have sexual tension and everything like that so this is like the full-length novel about them i can't wait to read it and the cover is just so good like look at this look at this art just iconic so i can't wait to read this and i'm so happy that my package did not get stolen god bless god bless god bless Hi friends, we're in my bathroom. So I'm gonna be cleaning today and I'm planning to spend most of the day uh, cleaning my house and listening to the audiobook for Amina al Sarafi. Yesterday, I didn't do any reading at all. Um, very much not a reading day. It was not my day at all yesterday, um, but I tried to make the most of it. But like yesterday, I was supposed to go see the SZA concert in Philly and she canceled it or it's postponed or whatever. Um, and that just threw my whole day off. Like it threw the whole mood off for me but I did end up going to the gym and I did wash my hair yesterday so like small victories but I'm still pissed off about my concert and the way that that you know that ended up so it wasn't fantastic didn't love that gonna get into listening to this audiobook and cleaning in an absolutely stunning turn of events I'm in the hospital um I'm hooked up to an IV I just had some x-rays done so yeah no reading happened today, but it sure is an adventure. I'm hoping that it's not the case, but it's possible that I'll be here all night. So I did bring my book. So if at all possible, if I can stop freaking out long enough to read, I might do that, maybe, um, since there's no Wi-Fi in here, so nothing better to do but read um but yeah yeah i don't know if this lighting is giving but my coffee maker is going in the background so if you hear like gurgling noises that's what it is 
listen besties i've been having a hell of a past few days i mean truly it just like bad on top of bad on top of bad just an absolute mess an absolute travesty of a past few days i don't know what's going on i had some problems basically i started a new medication and it, it did not go well for me so i had to go to the hospital and i went to the hospital um and i was there for a while they were planning to keep me overnight but then they decided to send me home but they gave me this medicine in my iv also the nurse who put my iv in very nice woman but she was just like rummaging around in there and my vein still hurts days later so I, and I have had multiple IVs in my life and never have I experienced that. So go back to school, bestie. But you were a very nice woman. Um, so yeah, so I had this IV and they were giving me lots of fluids because I couldn't eat the day that I went into the hospital. And so then they gave me this medicine called glucagon that's supposed to like, it's supposed to help relax my muscles because I was having some stuff. So they gave me this medicine, right? So they're like, yeah, like, are you feeling the effects of the medicine? Like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, I don't feel anything. And they were like, oh, it has this side effect that, like, you may vomit. So, like, here's a bag in case. But I didn't. I didn't throw up or anything. I got sent home. I'm like, okay, I'm cool. I'm fine. I, I made it through the, the worst urgent period of my unwellness they sent me home from the hospital i'm gonna be fine i was not fine i got home and i threw up so violently that i threw out my back and i couldn't walk i had to army crawl my way from the bathroom to my bed and i still could not physically lift myself up i had to get my mother to come get me and physically pick me up and put me into the bed um yeah and then then yesterday while I'm spending the day recovering, shut up, coffee maker. Shut up. I get it. I get it. So then yesterday, yesterday, while I'm spending the day recovering from my back being fucked up, right? I get the headache from hell. Another side effect of this glucagon shit that they gave me. And I thought that my head was going to split open. So very, very rough challenging few days um just absolutely fucking horrendous just a terrible time um yeah just so bad like so bad it was so bad that me and my mom just had to laugh like we just had to laugh because it just it didn't even fucking make sense anymore but i did end up finishing the adventures of amina al sarafi so i'm going to tell you about that after i make my cup of coffee I just changed my clothes because I'm about to go out for a second um, and it's kind of cold so need more coverage than the other shirt was providing but I did finish the adventures of Amina al -Sarafi. I think I'm going to give it like 4.5 stars it was a really good really fun fantasy story um, I loved Amina as a protagonist I just thought she was so interesting um, and I think that she really shines as a character in contrast to all of the other characters that are around her because she has this really great like group of friends and I feel like you know her friendship with them and the way that they interact with each other the banter but also the deep love and care that they have for her and that she has for them really like bolsters the story makes it feel more emotionally impactful and like um it has a lot more meaning through Amina's relationships with the other people in the story um but she also has this dynamic with her husband who is a demon and there's lots of like angst and betrayal but still like some sexual tension there that I think is so funny and it's so funny to me that her husband is like honestly he's a loser like he's a demon yes and he's like kind of tricked her into this bargain but he's he's a loser like he's very much he doesn't feel like a threat like he could be a threat but he doesn't feel like a threat most of the time because he's kind of a loser he's a coward um he's very like whiny and just dumb but amina is still like so sprung over him at least sexually like he could be doing anything and she'll be thinking about like Oh, like that glorious ass like just it doesn't matter what he's doing what he's saying how annoyed she is with him how disgusted she is with him as a person she still be thinking about him like damn i remember when he was putting that thing on me like his power he is such a bum like truly he is such a bum but his impact because amina is still like still no matter what goes on there's just one scene where she's been like set out to drift at sea and he like finds her and he's taking care of her and he's like bathing her and stuff and she's like damn like we should get it in right now right here lord have mercy 
We must stay focused, brothers. She had to like, she's constantly in her mind like telling herself, we have to focus, we can't give in. We can't have sex with him again. And it's just so fucking funny. Like, I think that her dynamic with him is really interesting because it's like, it's like lovers to enemies, kind of, but it's just like, I don't know. I've never read a, I don't even want to call it romantic, but I've never read a dynamic like that before. And it's just so entertaining. I feel like some of my favorite scenes in the book are when Amina is bouncing off of her husband, Rosh. I think that's how you say his name, because he's just so funny and ridiculous and just like a very laughable type of character. And then Amina, I feel like in contrast to him, you know, like she's really brave, very like smart, a rational thinker, very compassionate. She cares about others. And like Rosh absolutely does not. And so the way that they, the way that they vibe together is just hilarious. Like I love it. I'm obsessed with it. Um, but yeah, I thought that the world building in this was pretty cool. It's kind of a mixture of a bunch of different um, mythologies and beliefs and stuff like that. So there is kind of an, uh, an amalgamation of a lot of different things in here. So I can't say it's just one particular type of fantasy or inspired by one particular uh, belief system or culture because it is a mix of a bunch of things. But Amina, she is Muslim. And so a lot of stuff that happens, she's like always keeping in mind like her creator and um it's really interesting like i don't know uh, the way that sa chocolate party chooses to do like the religious mythological stuff in the book um i thought that that was really cool and what else did i want to say i also want to say that this apparently is connected to the david Watt trilogy not like you have to read one to understand the other but there is a character from the david Watt trilogy uh a minor character that appears in this and i'm assuming that would also mean that this is set prior to the david ball trilogy because that side character is like not in the david ball trilogy for that long uh wink wink so and there's also a mention of like dara kind of because it talks about like a magical like emerald ring that like people are enslaved inside of and there are some moments where we see like devas like and so it's interesting so it, apparently they're set in like the same world even if it's not during the same time period and even if the storylines don't seem to be very connected but i did like those little easter eggs as a david ball trilogy stand so those are my thoughts um that's what i've been thinking and today i do have plans to read some other stuff um i'm reading this novella by rebecca weatherspoon and it is called a walk in the park and it's like a romance novella it's an audible original but i need to read a few of the audible originals that i have in my library right now because i have canceled my audible subscription and that subscription is ending i want to say in like a week so i have a lot of audible originals that i need to read before they take away the audible original audible plus catalog from me so i'm reading this one this is like a novella about these two people there's like a mix-up at the animal shelter and they both are given the same dog so they decide to like co-parent this dog together and then sparks fly apparently and the part that i'm at in the novella so far they have just picked up their dog from the shelter and they're like getting the dog sent to the vet maybe not the vet to the groomers rather um and so it's about them like talking about their new co-parenting arrangement and that's where i'm at so far so yeah this was a long update but those are the thoughts that i've been thinking since the last time i spoke to you so when I speak to you again, hopefully I will have finished yes. this novel. So, I did end up completing A Walk in the Park by Rebecca Weatherspoon, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna give that one a rating just because it's so short. Um, it was only like a two hour audiobook, I think, and yeah, it's like just a really short, but very sweet and cute uh, romance. Just the stuff that they do while they're co-parenting, they are attracted to each other, so they end up starting a relationship. And like, it's very, very short. Their relationship, you know, progresses pretty quickly. Um, and it's like, it's cute, but I just don't feel like, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable giving it a star rating because it's such a short book that I don't know. I feel like, I did feel like the ending was a little bit rushed, but it's a novella, so it is what it is. But I did like it. I definitely would have preferred maybe a longer book. I could continue getting all of those like amazing fun vibes, but it was still a cute listen, like I said. Um, so I finished that and I liked it. And now I'm thinking that I'm going to read before the coffee gets cold today. Um, 
I've got some other stuff that I need to do today. But I am hoping to get some reading done today. And if I do, I'll be picking this one up. I did end up finishing before the coffee gets cold and I don't really know how I feel about it I feel like maybe it's like a 3.5 star for me um, it really was a very interesting concept you know I sort of like the um, I don't know I was gonna call it magical realism but I think that magical realism has like a very specific definition so I don't know if this fits into it or not but you know that kind of like fantastical almost fable like quality to the magic and the way that it works in here is very much like teaching a life lesson sort of narrative um and i think that it has some interesting things to say i definitely preferred uh certain parts to others so the first part of this is called the lovers i really did not like the first chapter of this so that first 80 page stretch of the book i was feeling like oh i actually hate this book i really did not like the first section um i just thought it was really boring um the characters were not interesting, not likable, their problems, the reasoning why the main character of that section, Fumiko, like the reason she wanted to go into the past was just like, girl move the fuck on, like you don't need him. Um, so it just was like, yeah. As the book goes on, like the following parts get a lot more interesting. Um, there's a lot more depth to and complexity to like the issues that those characters are facing and why they want to go uh, forward or backward in time. Um, and I think that that was like it was really interesting but i don't know if i loved it and i don't really think that it emotionally touched me and moved me in the way that it has for a lot of other readers but my lack of a heart does not mean that it's not a good book but i don't know i just think that my experience with it was kind of yeah like okay i read it cool but i don't know it just it didn't really it didn't really speak to me i guess i don't think that it's bad or anything but it didn't speak to me um so yeah that's kind of how i feel about it like a 3.5 star maybe um i think my favorite chapter in this was called the sisters that one was really good uh but yeah that's like my final thoughts that's all i have to say about this book i don't know um but like yeah i read it in this video i read three stories i read before the coffee gets cold amina al sarafi and a walk in the park by rebecca weatherspoon i'm satisfied with this reading week um and i feel good about myself because this one was on my march tbr so yay me finally reading my tbr actually being responsible and accountable we love that for me um and yeah that's the reading week thank you so much for reading with me and i hope you will stay tuned for my next video bye guys <laughs>